Hey, Nature Detectives, I'm Conrad. I'm an outdoor educator with the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation at Lester State Park, and today I have a nature mystery for you. I have been so looking forward to today's video because for months now we've been talking about gypsy moths, also known by their scientific name, Dispar, D-I-S-P-A-R. These moths started their lives as little eggs, little foamy spots on the sides of trees. We've been talking about the fuzzy little caterpillars with the red and blue dots, but now they're gone. And we are here to find out where they went. We have a couple insects with us today in the scientific jar of science to help us figure out where they went and what happened to them. These two insects are the same kind of bug. They're the same species. There is one that's a male and one that's a female. We can figure out which is which and what kind of insect they are just by paying attention to a couple nature clues. Let's look at the little one first. The little one, when it's at rest, which as you can see is not very often, is kind of triangular shaped. Its wings kind of point in a triangular shape, kind of like an arrowhead. If we look closely at the tip of the arrow, the top of the triangle, we see some feathery antennae sticking off of there. This animal has really feathery antennae, and the feathers, the little hairs on the antenna, are coming off to either sides of the main stem of the antenna. The antenna has a main stem in the middle, and hairs coming off to either side, just like a bird feather. And we notice that this animal is pretty brown-grayish, kind of tree bark color. They blend in really well with tree bark. And turning our attention to the bigger animal in the scientific jar of science, also flopping and flipping around quite a bit, you notice that this animal is a lot lighter colored than the other one. Its wings point straight back from the body so that it's kind of more of a long tent shape rather than a wider arrowhead shape. And then at the top of the tent, the tip of its head, you'll notice that its antenna are also feathery, but the hairs on the feather only come out of one side of the main stem, and those antenna look to be a little bit shorter and not nearly as fluffy and feathery. And in general, we notice that this bigger animal has more flecks and spots and speckles and speckles all over it. Let's put all those nature clues together. We have a big animal and a little animal. The big one is kind of white. The little one is kind of gray. The big one has a shorter, kind of simpler antennae. The little one has a wider, bigger, feathery antennae. And the little one is more plain, and the bigger one is more speckly. These are adult disper moths. And if you look really closely at the front of their heads, you won't see a long, curly tongue like on a butterfly. They don't eat anything at all. And that's part of why I've been looking forward to today's video so much. These moths will not eat a thing. They are done. They will only live for about a week or so. The females will live just a little bit longer than the males. The females have that big, fat abdomen, that backside of their body, because they're filled with eggs. They're so heavy with eggs that they can't fly. They're also so stuffed with eggs, there's no room for a stomach. They don't have any feeding organs at all. And the males don't have a mouth. They can't feed on anything either. So that means that that feeding frenzy of caterpillars that was stripping all the leaves off of trees, especially oak trees, is over. The long feeding frenzy of the disper moth caterpillars is at an end. We won't see very many caterpillars at all anymore this year. We might see these moths for a couple weeks, but after that, we won't really see any active uh, stages of these disper moths at all. The only thing that will be left are the egg masses left behind by these females. The females will hatch out of their cocoons and wait for a gentleman suitor to come and find her. And they'll do their thing, and then she'll lay a bunch of fertilized eggs behind. And they look kind of like a thumbprint of foam on the side of a solid structure, a bench, a building, a tree, a log, a rock. And those eggs will sit there long after the parents pass away of old age after a couple weeks, and they'll survive through the entire winter as eggs. That foam helps to protect them, and they won't develop into little vulnerable caterpillars until next spring. 
Disper moths are vulnerable to a couple diseases and fungus. There are viruses, and bacteria, and fungi that do affect them and kill them. But those only spread really easily through the population when there's a population spike, and especially when the caterpillars are all close together, and those diseases can spread quickly through them. So every time there's a big spike in population, that's setting up the disper moths to have a crash. So we're seeing a ton of disper moths right now, but watch over the next couple years and we'll see a crash in their numbers. We probably won't see very many disper moths where they have been most numerous this year. And the trees that the caterpillars had fed on so heavily and defoliated in the spring and early summer, for the most part, those trees will recover. They constantly put out new leaves all the time. Now that they're completely uh, done with their feeding cycle, the disper moths uh, won't be taking away those leaves anymore, and the trees can replace them. By mid-August, we should have a nice new fresh crop of leaves, not only for the trees to make their food, but for our native moth species to feed on a little bit too. There are uh, spikes and crashes in disper moth populations that we've been seeing in western New York for many years. There was a big disper moth outbreak in the 1980s, which did strip away a lot of the leaves from trees, especially oaks. But oaks are a pretty long-lived and tough tree, and any tree that's more than 30 years old has been through a disper moth outbreak before. They've been here for many, many years. The New York State Department of Environmental Conservation considers them a naturalized species. So even though they don't come from Eastern North America originally, they don't do enough harm to the natural environment to be considered a serious, high-priority invasive pest. And that's why New York State Parks doesn't use any sort of control methods to try to kill disper moths and eliminate them as a species in New York. Any sort of technique that we would use like that, like spraying chemicals, would do more harm than good to the environment. It would disproportionately kill a lot of native species like luna moths, cecropia moths, and io moths, and rosy maple moths, and all these wonderful moths that do so many beneficial things in nature. And these um, moths, when they lay their eggs, they lay so many and they have so many caterpillars that spraying chemicals, they're not going to kill all of them long term. They're going to be here for a very, very long time. If you are a concerned homeowner, you can look for their egg masses, you can uh, scrape them off into soapy water, and if you really want, if you're very concerned about a specific tree, if it's a very young one that might get defoliated and weakened to a dangerous extent, you can wrap some duct tape sticky side out on the outside of the tree. I just caution you because it can also catch a lot of other kinds of insects or other kinds of animals. So you wanna make sure that you keep an eye on it if you're going to do that. Sometimes the caterpillars I have found, they don't stick so much to the outside of the tape, they crawl behind the tape and kind of hide there as a safe little spot. So you can catch the caterpillars then. If you're camping or just casually out for a stroll in Letchworth State Park, you're probably going to see a lot of the males flying around. But keep an eye out for the females on the trees and on the rocks where they made their cocoons, sitting right next to that empty cocoon, waiting for a male to find them, and keep an eye out for those egg masses. If you really want to try to get rid of some disper moths locally, just scrape off those egg masses with your finger, either right on the ground or into some soapy water. Well, thank you so much for joining me for today's nature mystery. If you have any questions about disper moths, please put a comment in the comment section below the video. Share this video with your friends to put their nature detective skills to the test. And as always, like Letchworth State Park's Facebook page to stay tuned for more nature mysteries.